everyone it's me Maraid here and I'm back again I hope you're doing well um this week's video if you couldn't tell by the thumbnail and title I'm doing my well it's not my anything it's just the new year booktuber tag um I originally saw this on Ava's channel and she mentioned that Jessen actually made up the tag or the questions and everything so um I'll link both of those channels down below check them out if you could that'd be very kind um yeah, check out both the channels, subscribe, watch the videos, everything like that. Um, I actually wrote down the questions and then I wrote out my answers. Um, I don't really know why, because I can think of the, them off the top of my head, but I just did. And I left my book on the side, so goodbye. So I wrote down a my little book here um, and I'll find the answers and um, I'll give you my answers. So number one is what am I most excited for in 2023? I'll be completely honest here. I don't have any big plans for 2023. Um, I don't, I'm really scared of traveling. I'm not, I'm not really scared of traveling. I'm really scared of planes. So I don't have like any big holidays or anything like that booked. Um, there's no big anything coming up really for me I don't there's really nothing like super exciting um something that I'm looking forward to though which isn't really book related uh is at my work I put in a pitch I spoke about this very briefly in my in a vlog I did and I can't remember which vlog it was but I think it was the Christmas reading vlog uh so I got this very briefly that at my work I put in a Dragon's Den style sort of pitch for something new for the library what we'd want to have and um me and my manager sort of came up with a needs bank like a toiletry sort of needs bank and it got approved and we got the funding so uh in the new year like this sort of time we're about to start um planning our needs bank and exactly how it'll work and buying the products and uh talking about it more publicly and locally and all that sort of things so i'm very very excited about that um that's something i think to me it's a big plan because I really really want to be like heavily involved in it um I really want to take a lot of control over it almost just because I feel really passionately passionately about it so that is one of my big plans almost for the year um it's nothing really to do with books uh or so much me personally but it's just something that I'm very very excited for uh in the new year. Uh, my second question is, do I have a Goodreads challenge goal? And why is it that number? I do, I say 115. Um, and I don't really know why I said 115. My main reason is because I want to read more than I was reading last year because I had big like breaks last year. Like I'd go like nearly three, week, three weeks without finishing a book. Um, I don't really want to do that again, uh, but I, want to read more I had 101 reads last year obviously that includes the how many books I DNF'd maybe over the year I don't know how many I actually DNF'd but uh I wouldn't say it was like loads um that includes those so not really 100 but um that's what Goodreads is counting it as and I always say that I read my DNF books because I need the numbers so not gonna lie um <laughs> but I'm hoping that it's like less of a mess this year and I just um I'm, I'm less of a mess and I sort of read a bit more um continuously I'm already on two books already wow I've nearly finished the third book but loads of stuff has happened my mom's in hospital she's okay I don't need to worry but I was awake for over 30 for like 36 hours so um it's been a bit of a mess of a few days which is why this book this challenge sorry rather or this tag sorry is coming out a week later than it was intended to so everything's okay no need to worry i'm not saying it for anything other reason than just to explain why this is a bit late so everything's okay no need to stress um anyway my first question is list three five star reads so like my next anticipated five star reads i think um that i'm anticipating for them to be five stars um so i I'm a bit strange. I feel like I give a lot of things five stars, but then equally, I feel like I gotta give a lot of things four stars too. So, um, the, the ones that I put, the next book from Catherine Wiltshire, because without a doubt, any book that I read from Catherine Wiltshire is automatically a five stars. It's that always just so good. So, um, I know I can count on Catherine Wiltshire to provide me a very good book. Um, the next, uh, the next Ice Planet Barbarian book, because yeah, it's, that's another automatic five stars. They're also good. That I think they're always good. 
I think every single book is good. So um, I know that's going to be a good, <laughs> a good book. And then the other one that I said, well, the third and final one that I said was the second book in the Dracula du duet by Corinna Howell or Halley. I think it, oh, sorry, I think it was called Black Rose is what it's called. Um, it's going to be a five stars. I loved the first book in the series. I cannot wait to read this next book. Um, and I think it'll be five stars. Like I have, I don't doubt it'll be five stars. I get a lot. I give a lot of Crina Howells or Halley's books five or four stars. There's, I've never read a book with hers that's been like a three stars. So, um, just amazing. So I'm hoping it'll be a five stars anyway. And the next question number four is what genre slash subgenre genre slash trope do I want to read more of? Okay, so I said I want to read more vampire books or like paranormal like books maybe alien books but more vampire paranormal books because I read this duet by Krina Howe and well I read the first book um first vampire book and it genuinely was amazing and when I was growing up when I was a teenager like I loved the vampire I love vampire books so much so I don't really know why I wouldn't like them now as an adult uh but I like romance ones I don't want to read particularly books that are super vampire-y like super like paranormally like I don't want it to all the books to be the focus on the paranormal aspect and then the focus on the romance like I want a very good balance of the two uh so if anyone has any really good like vampire romance <laughs> recommendations like I would love to know like adult as well I'd really like to know so if anyone could recommend those I'd really be grateful um but anyway the fifth question is what trope do you think will be popular in 2023 I'm terrible with predictions, with every prediction ever, anywhere. I'm really bad. When the World Cup was on, um, uh, we had like the regular, one of our regulars came in at work and said all the time, he was going, what do you think the score is going to be tonight? Or what do you think the score is going to be today for the match or tomorrow for the match? And I'd always give a prediction every single time without fail, it was wrong. So I'm terrible at predictions, um, but these are just my thoughts. So on a quite similar vein, I said sports sort of trope would become very popular, more popular than it already is because it's already quite popular now. But more specifically, I mean football. And my reason for saying that is because of the World Cup. I think some American authors maybe might have seen some football TikToks or some or some football matches maybe uh, because this was a very... Um, I don't watch any of the World Cup because I don't give a fuck. But um, this was a very, like, spicy World Cup. Like, I feel like I was always seeing stuff about the World Cup, no matter what. I was really fed up with it, actually. But um, I was always seeing stuff about the World Cup and how these sort of people shouldn't have gotten into the final, etc., etc. So I think it might have reached the United States. Um, and I know it's not, not as big in the States as it is in Europe and in the UK, definitely. Uh, so I think it might... Um, reach some American authors and it might become a bit more popular and I think it would uh yeah I think it might start making a bit more of an appearance because you do see some football books but the only football books I've seen have always been from British authors so anyway the other one that I said that I think will become bigger but there's really no real vibe for the reason as to why uh is brother's best friend don't know why just think it and the other one I gave free sorry um is I think retellings like fairy tale retellings I think they're gonna become massive this year I'll probably be wrong with every single prediction but those are my predictions <laughs> um okay so I've got name three bookish goals in 2023 my number one is to hit my Goodreads challenge because I don't know if I've ever hit 115 before. Um, so that is a goal. I don't know if I'll hit the goal, but that is the goal. And my second like bookish goal is um, I want to read more non-fiction or like poetry books even uh, because I read a poetry book the other day and I don't read very many of them if I'm honest. And I only like women poets. I don't like men poets. Which sounds really rude, but I just find women more relatable probably. Um, and... I read it and I like loved it. It was on my Libby. It was called All the Men I Never Married by Kim Moore. I'll talk about it in my wrap up at the end of this month. But I read it and I like really, really liked it. And I was like, actually, maybe I want to read more. Um, also, I do like nonfiction books. I just never pick them up. 
Uh, but when I do read them, I tend to really enjoy them. But I just like I really I'm interested in like history and uh, all that sort of stuff. Like I'm obsessed with ancient Egypt. Like I would love to read. We have a book in the library at the minute uh, about ancient Egypt, but it's really thick, and I just know it will take me like two weeks to read. When if I were to read that book. It's a romance book, it would take me but like, I don't even know what, like <laughs> five days to finish or something. So it just takes me a while to get through them, but I would like to read a bit more. Okay, and then my final goal is a bit silly, but it's to finish the Ice Planet Barbarian series. I, I literally have three books left to read this year. Well, just three books, left, uh, three books left to read in the series, but I keep putting them off because I don't want to finish the series, essentially. I do not want the series to end, so I keep putting them off. I just need to finish it now. It's my thing. I just need to finish it. Um, I also have written here that another goal that I slightly have, I guess, in a similar vein, is to finish more series because I start series and then I never finish them. Like I have so many unfinished series that I've read. I just need to finish them. Uh, so that is my... I never used to do that and now I do. Uh, so that is one of my other bookish girls for 2023 number seven my three non-bookish girls for 2023 so i actually wrote down seven goals not here but in my like planner or whatever of things that i wanted to achieve this year another one is to publish at least two books i published two books last year i want to publish two books this year uh i'm hoping it's feasible who knows but that is one of the goals that I really want to achieve. I want to publish two books this year. Um, I just want to keep up that trend. I would love to write a Christmas novella and I have, I don't have an idea for one. I have a setting for one, but I don't have an idea for it. So I can't see that happening this year. Well, maybe it could, but I can't see that happening. But equally, I want to write two books this year. Maybe a Christmas novella. Uh, so that is one of the first goal. Um, Equally, also, I can't write super quickly. Some people can, I can't. Well, I can only do what I can do. Don't compare yourself to others. This isn't a spiel, but all I can do is what I can do. So I can't write as quickly as some other people. So this is why two books here is reasonable for me. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> my second goal is to go on a holiday this year, which sounds so stupid, but I didn't go on a holiday in 2022, which is like, fair enough. People don't go on holidays every single year. I really want to do go on a holiday or go away or do something this year because I said last year I desperately wanted to do that and I never did so I want to do that it sounds like a really silly goal to have but um when I was like 16 to 18 like I was borderline like agoraphobic like I was scared to leave my house for anything other than going to school so I've come a really really, really long way from that point obviously but I think I still want to go on like a holiday and and I'm petrified of flying like I'm so scared of flying to the point of I don't watch movies if they have like an airplane scene in it if they're on an airplane in a movie I fast forward for it uh so I'm scared to that point of even like seeing people in an airplane so um yeah I don't I really don't like it so I want to go on a holiday but like a reasonable holiday somewhere anyway and then the third one, I don't know where it is, my final goal, okay, so I want to go on like day trips by myself and equally I think the holiday, if I went on the holiday, it might have to be by myself, I think it would be by myself uh, because yeah, I just think it would be by myself Um, so that's really pushing the boundaries for me going somewhere, like for like somewhere abroad uh, by myself, that is really, really pushing the boundaries but I've sort of realised I have to stop waiting for other people in order to like live my life because uh, then I'll be waiting forever and I'll never do anything ever because other people are busy or whatever. So um, I need to do that. I need to just go on day trips by myself. I think I need to work myself up. So I want to go to the beach by myself. You know, if I ever maybe go to the beach somewhere and stay there overnight, and stay in a hotel somewhere overnight, or do something nice like that. Like I want to, I want to do that. I don't want to, I don't know. I don't ever not do anything because I'm waiting for other people. Like that's really boring and horrible. So I don't want to do that and um, that's one of my goals and I sort of want to be a bit more adventurous this year <laughs> okay and then number eight and the final one is what do I want to leave behind in 2022 and I've gone for a book related thing 
I'm bored of people judging other people on what they read. It's so boring to me. It's so boring for people to be like, oh, you like romance books or, oh, this book wasn't very good. Why do you like that book? You like what you like. You just like what you like. Just get over it, please, for the love of God. Um, I can't understand it. I just don't care equally enough. It sounds really rude, but I just don't care enough about what like other people do to judge what you're reading if you say to me i only read non-fiction books yeah cool i don't care it sounds really rude but like i just i just don't have enough energy to care about what loads of people what loads of other people are doing i just don't so um that's what i want to leave behind in 2022 people being really judgmental over what other people read or what authors other people read or what genres tropes etc i just don't care like i just don't <laughs> um so that was it thank you so much for watching it's only a little midweek video, whatever the next video will be, will be up on Sunday, I think, or Monday, I don't know. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I shall speak soon. If you could like and subscribe, I'll be greatly appreciative. And see you soon. And goodbye.